Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with my 1960 XK Falcon Deluxe and I'm going to be installing a new modern digital style instrument voltage regulator which puts out 5 volts. Now the reason that I am replacing or I should say bypassing the original voltage regulator for the instruments is that I have noticed that both my fuel gauge and my temperature gauge have been ticking when I've been driving. And when I've researched into that, the reason that is, is because these cars come with a voltage regulator from back in 1960, which is actually a bimetallic strip, where one strip heats up, closes the contact, and then it calls, opens. And so it flickers between 12 volts and zero volts to average out and produce five volts. Now, when these fail, they typically go completely positive 12 volts, which will then burn out the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. So before mine actually fails and goes to 12 volts uh, completely, I'm going to replace it. But in fact, I believe in this instrument cluster, my temperature gauge actually has the bimetallic strip voltage regulator built into the temperature gauge. And then it has a loop wire across to the fuel gauge. So I'm, I'm going to bypass the bimetallic strip voltage regulator that is in my temperature gauge here today. So just confirming what I'm saying with the original Falcon shop manual from 1960, we can see we're on the instrument section of the manual. We've got a wiring diagram down here. We've got the main wiring harness. Clearly it's got 12 volts coming up to the temperature gauge. And then it's got this loop wire that I'm talking about that carries the five volts. And then you've got the wires coming from the sender units for both the temperature and the fuel gauge. So just to confirm that this new digital voltage regulator is working as I expect, I will put the ground of the voltage regulator on my battery. I'll put the positive on the positive 12 volts. Then I'll grab my multimeter probe and I'll just put it on the yellow and we'll see what it's actually reading. There we go. So we can clearly see that this new digital voltage regulator for the instruments is putting out just over five volts. So because we're going to take the instrument cluster out of the vehicle, I'm just going to remove the earth connection from the battery whilst I'm doing it, just as a safety precaution. We don't want any sparks as we're pulling the instrument cluster out. Now to remove the instrument cluster out of these vehicles, it is pretty easy. You've got these three Phillips head screws along the top of the instrument bezel. And then under here, you've got these two flathead screws, one there and one there, which you simply take out. Then you'll be able to bring the instrument cluster forward and just lie it down. Additionally, you will find that you have to remove the speedo cable from the back of the instrument cluster. So we're just gonna get up underneath the dash and do that first. So to be honest, this is probably one of the most awkward things to do. As you can see, I'm back in under the instrument cluster from the passenger side. I'm just gonna get hold of that there. There we go. And just undo that nut holding the speedo cable in. Then I'll just pull it out. As you can see, we've got that out now. So we'll get back round to the front and get that instrument cluster out. All right, so we'll start with the three Phillips head screws at the top of the bezel. I'm just gonna place them in order up here. You'll note that I've put a rag down there on top of the steering column just to protect it from any scratches. And then we've got the flat screwdriver to get the two out down the bottom. Put those up there as well. Get the bezel completely out the way. And then we just have these two extra screws at the bottom of the instrument cluster to get out. So I'll just get them out quickly now. Get around this 
solid. All right, so as you can see, my instrument cluster is super tight. I'm just gonna release from the back the main wiring harness. There we go. Now I can just ease the whole thing forward. There we go. So what I had to do to get that forward, just had to unclick this wiring harness here from underneath that hook. As you can see on the right hand side here, just per my uh, workshop manual, I've got the three prong temperature gauge. So that's got the inbuilt voltage regulator. So just to confirm that we've got the correct terminals, just got my multimeter out, hooked up the battery and we've switched the instrument cluster on. I'll just pop the earth of my multimeter on a ground position. Now, as you can see, if I put the probe on that connector there, we've got a solid 12 volts. However, if I come up to the top terminal of the temperature gauge, we can see that the multimeter is actually oscillating between nothing and 12 volts. So that's what I was saying, that's the bimetallic strip working. You can see it's pulsing. So that's what we're going to bypass. Now the reason that I've got the multimeter out is I could tell straight away that the wiring was slightly different to the workshop manual. And in fact, the workshop manual is slightly incorrect. I don't know why, but I'm going with what I've just tested on the multimeter, that this is the live 12 volt feed coming down in here with that spade style of connector. And we've got the five volt connector here on top of the temperature gauge. Because I have uncovered what I believe is a discrepancy in the original workshop manual, what I've just done is taken a couple of photocopies and marked up by hand the differences. So on the very left, you've got the original unedited workshop manual picture. In the middle, You've got my markup of how I believe the wiring is going to the temperature gauge. And then on the right hand side, you can see the modification which I intend to do today to install the new voltage regulator. Okay, for safety, I've just re-disconnected the battery. We'll get this main power feed off here. So that's the main 12 volts coming in. And then we're going to take this connector off here as well. So we'll put that to our 5 volt. So when we tested earlier, the yellow was clearly the five volt output. So we're gonna connect that back under there, like that. That's not gonna work, so we we'll have to come up with another, another way to do that. As you can see, I've just adapted with the nuts that I've actually got, so I could get that connector on there, the five volt connector. I've removed them from the original 12 volt into that gauge because reality is we don't ever want anything connected to that anymore because we're bypassing the bimetallic strip between those two terminals. So as you can see, I've just hooked up the 12 volt into the digital voltage regulator and that's just gonna stay like that. And then I just need to find a good ground connection and we'll be good to go. So just looking at the options for a good ground connection in here, I can see we've got this screw that goes to the bracket which actually holds the main wiring loom when the dash is back in position. So I'm gonna use that because it's really close. It's clearly a good solid screw into the metal dash, so that'll make good ground.
So I've got the earth connected, I've got the five volt connected, I've got the 12 volt connected, and now we just need to reconnect the five volt across to the fuel gauge. So now we should have power across to the fuel gauge and good to go to reinstall the dash and to have a bit of a test. Now on this new digital voltage regulator for the instruments, it does have a self-adhesive backing. So I think I'm just gonna thread it in underneath and just stick it on the back of the instrument cluster here, just to keep it nicely tucked out of the way. I just threaded it there through deliberately before I peeled that off. And now I'll just stick it down. That looks quite neat there. All right, so let's get the instrument cluster back in. Just getting that loom back the way it was. Okay, so we'll get the bottom screws in first. All right, so before we actually completely put the fascia back on for the instrument cluster, let's reconnect the battery and see how we go. And for the moment of truth, okay. So there you go. Clearly, we can see that the fuel gauge has come up. There. As you'd expect, the temperature gauge is still sitting on nothing because the engine's not running. So I think we're good to go. We'll put the instrument cluster completely back together. Then we'll start the car and we'll see how the gauges go. Now the final thing to do before we forget is to get in under the dash from the passenger side and to reconnect that speedo cable. So it's pretty tight in here under the dash, but we can see the speedo, back of the speedo there, and we just gotta insert that speedo cable back onto there and to tighten that nut up. So you can see I've got that nicely tightened and fastened there now. All right, so let's start it up and see what happens. Bear in mind it's been a while since this car's been started. All right, so we've got the car running. We can see the fuel gauge has come up nicely there. Temperature gauge is still sitting on cold, but car's only been really running for 10, 20 seconds. So let's let it warm up and see if the temperature gauge comes up. Engine's still stone cold. So I'll come back to you once she's warmed up. But given this engine hasn't been started in a good couple of months now, I think that's running really well. 60 year old vehicle. Starts up far better than any modern plastic fantastic wood in 60 years time. So I'll just show you a few things while this vehicle is warming up that I've done over the years. My intent with this vehicle is not actually to do a restoration. I'm the second owner of this vehicle for a 60 year old vehicle. It's in amazing condition. So I just want to keep it as it is and maintain. So a few years back I put a new exhaust manifold on. I put a new braking master cylinder on. I'll put a new fuel pump on down there. A new water pump. You can see a, a link to that video where I put the new water pump on it. I put a new radiator in. I put all new wheel cylinders throughout this car. 
you can see a video on that as well so yes I've done quite a fair bit of work and in the future I'm going to be doing more work on this car but it's just about maintaining it There you go folks, so she's warmed up a little bit now. We can see we've got the fuel gauge up and the temperature gauge has come up off of the bottom peg. So that's excellent. We can see our new instrument voltage regulator is working perfectly. And importantly, we don't have any of the sporadic ticking that I was seeing before, where um, it would literally, you know, three or four seconds apart, the temperature gauge would go bang, cross nearly to the full, and then it would back down I mean, this engine's been running for a couple of minutes now. It's just mildly warm, and you can see it's just sitting down. I suspect if I take it for a drive, it'll just come up to about the halfway mark, which is where it should be. So that's probably what I'll do now. Probably take the car for a ride, but I won't show you that. So folks, that's how to bypass the original bimetallic strip voltage regulator for the instrument panel with a modern digital voltage regulator. If you've liked this video, do feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, have a good evening.